Winter. Welcome to another edition of What's the Story here on The People Chronicles. Herd by a horse. Did you ever hear about that? I heard about herd by a horse and the first thing I thought of was Wilbur and Mr. Ed. <laughs> it's a very common... <laughs> Just dated myself, didn't yeah. I? <laughs> The owner of Herd by a Horse, David Rosenker. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's been nice to meet you. You and I have been talking. Mm -hmm. Herd by a Horse is not, well, it is H-E-A-R-D, but it's spelled H-E-R-D, Herd by a Horse. Correct. Um, you're using horses for therapy? Yes, we are. Uh, it, basically, uh, you know, as we had stated, and as we talked preliminary, is that we... We want to be able to encourage kids and adults and uh, whoever comes for therapy to uh, be able to talk freely and openly in a kind of a non-judgmental, um, playful kind of a format. How does a and horse make that happen? The horse makes it happen because people come in with all sorts of stories and experiences from either horses about what they know about horses, what they've had experience around horses, or what they think they know about horses. Uh, and there's usually a couple different kinds of people that come in, uh, people that are afraid uh, of horses and uh, have all these fears centered around horses because they've had a negative event, they've fallen off or were kicked or bitten or whatever from a horse. Uh, so they come in with all sorts of different experiences, but uh, some people, uh, actually the people that have the most challenges are the people that know horses and ride horses and are very familiar with horses. It's hardest for them? They struggle the most because we're non-riding. Uh, and we are basically doing uh, psychotherapy and using the horse as the medium. So the horse, uh, uh, for all intents and purposes, what the horse does for us is the horses are very intuitive and they pick up a sense about the emotional uh, um, state of what's going on in the arena at the time and the people at the time and respond to that. So we can look at the horses and get a pretty good sense about what's going on with somebody and how the horses are behaving uh, and so does the person that's in there. You, I've heard over the years, and I'm certainly you have, mm -hmm. um, somebody is maybe going to therapy, maybe needs therapy for any number of issues, mm -hmm. and they play it. Play the... They play, the, yeah, or they think they play it. You right, know, they, I'm not going to say it, or I know what you want, so I'll say what I think you want. Right. Does this kind of cut to the chase, help cut to the chase? Is it harder to for somebody to try to avoid questions when I say play it? Yeah, it's very hard. Uh, okay. It's very hard to, to kind of, uh, it, it, our situation is very hard for people to come in and first of all, not get anything out of it. Uh, mm -hmm. That's very difficult for that to happen. And what we deal very effectively with is kids and adults who are anti-therapy. Therapy. Okay. Uh, or have I guess kind that's of what I'm thinking. Of, right, or have kind of hit a limit with their therapy and are stuck. Yes. Uh, we do very well with those kinds of uh, kids and uh, adults uh, because they come in and they come in either angry or frightened or have had some negative experiences around therapy and they have all sorts of expectations and our therapeutic model is so different and so much more relaxed that uh, the, the focus is on them but it's also on the horse uh, and the horses that are in the arena and we use anywhere between one to three to four different horses depending on how many people are there at the time mm -hmm. uh, and depending on what the issues are. Uh, we deal with a variety of different issues whether it be anxiety, uh, trauma, addiction, recovery processes, uh, team building, um, all sorts of different issues that a typical therapist would deal with. We do the same thing but only utilizing the horses. You, you said recovery, trauma, addiction, team building. So that's really quite an array of issues yes, it is. and it can mm -hmm. be personal or it could be business. professional. Correct. Correct. Well, we've had a lot of uh, teams come in from different industries around the area uh, that have wanted to do team building and team building goes through a variety of different uh, uh, things through the uh, uh, and transitions through uh, the years from they've done rock climbing, they've done rope yeah. courses, yes. Uh, yes. they've done uh, paintball, they've done all sorts of different things. Uh, so teams that are kind of into building their team and their communication skills and their strategic planning skills are very adept at trying to find different things and we're one of those activities that work very well with, with teams and improving their communication. Uh, and it's very difficult to go through that process for them and not see some of their communication patterns. It's, uh, you can't hide out uh, when there's horses in the arena. I want to I kind of get to that. First of all, therapy can be hard mm -hmm. in that it forces you to look in your own mirror. That's what therapy is about and, and finding what my issues are Correct. and how I can improve those issues. So how does the horse help me look in the mirror? 
You know, what's interesting is, uh, you know, therapy can be hard, but we make it somewhat fun and challenging at the same time. Uh, it's, um, it, we're, uh, it's, it's a non-threatening type of atmosphere because of the horses. So uh, that I'm not sitting here with you and I have to tell you. No. Okay, so no. there's the fun. It, it, that's part of the fun. And part of the fun is that when we have kids or adults coming into the, to the uh, arena, we're not asking them and saying to them, okay, tell us what's going on. Uh, we say, what we want you to do, like let's say a, a child comes in and they've got some communication problems with a parent. So we'll have the parents and the child uh, go out to the arena and say, okay, what we would like you to do is to build us with all the different props that we have, and we have noodles and jumps and all sorts of different things, mm -hmm. stuffed animals, build us uh, uh, what it looks like of how your family communicates and wow. use the horses and the props that are out there. Give us a picture, a words? verbal picture about what, the, well, that's up to them. Oh. So they may build all sorts of different obstacles about how they communicate, and they make the horses stand, try to get them to stand in one spot. And again, it's not the completion of the activity, it's the process they go about. How do they communicate when they're doing that? What do they do when they, when they're, when they get stuck? Uh, who gives up? Who walks away? Who doesn't participate? Uh, and what are the horses, how are the horses reacting to what's happening in the arena? Is uh, that the key part for you? So if you're watching this and, and perhaps there's some tension, mm -hmm. uh, are you, is that horse that they're working with or the horse or horses in the arena, are you watching the horses or are you watching the... the uh, both actually. Uh, okay. There's always two of us in the arena. Uh, mm -hmm. One is the mental health specialist, which is myself. Mm -hmm. And the other one is the equine specialist, which is uh, my partner, Steph Brock. Mm -hmm. And we're always, uh, there's two of us always in every, every session. Uh, each session runs about 75 minutes. And there's one of us is watching the, the client or the patient or the mm -hmm. family. And the other one is watching the horses to make sure that things are safe. But also what they're paying attention to is what is the horses doing that they normally don't do? Uh, you know, we have a variety of things that like uh, an example, we had a team we worked with the other day who uh, we used the same horses we used in another team not that long ago. Uh, so the horses were the same. Mm -hmm. uh, we brought the team in and they started working with and about an hour into it, all three horses went off into the corner and laid down, which they never do. What does that mean to you? Well, at the time, what it meant to us and what it meant to the team, it wasn't as much as, and that's probably the biggest thing, is that what, what we want to know is what does this mean to them? And what does it tell oh, to them? to the team. Right. Because we can come in there and say, oh, here's what we think is going on. Right. And we're going to be off base 90% of the time. So what we ask is, th is them. So what, what are the horses doing? And what does that say about what's going on? And they will invariably say, or always will come back with, uh, well, here's what that means to me. And they're usually telling a secret about what's happening in that family and or that team or that particular group that they're with. Uh, and they start talking about what's going on with them and why they think the horses have done what they've done. So it's not, you're saying that to me, I'm not there. And the first thing I'm thinking is they're bored. <laughs> the horses are bored. Right. Or the horses um, are very calm. They feel safe with me. Correct. So I'm thinking one of those two things. Which is exactly why we don't, that's a great point, because that's exactly why we don't judge and say, so here's what we think is going on. Because okay. we don't know. And if we say, well, we think the horses are very calm, they may say, they may agree to that, but that's not really what's going on. So if we say to them, tell us what's happening, somebody in their group is going to say, they're bored silly because this is how we act all the time and we're a boring group of people. We don't want to talk, we don't tell each other anything, we don't communicate. Uh, or the team may say, they're just very relaxed because we really like being with each other. Um, yeah, so I'm we, thinking they're two options, right? right? So we don't, we don't kind of go in there and try to judge that because, and to try to guess what that is, we let them do the talking. Uh, and that's the power around therapy to begin with, is that the person does the talking, not the therapist. Because you're not supposed to figure out what's wrong. That's They'll right. tell they you. Are. And if you had said one of those two things, that's what could have been with. completely different. That's right. But by them saying it, ah, it makes that's sense. Right. That and, makes sense. Uh, and it's very powerful. And uh, horses are very... Um, in tune to emotions? Well, Is that a fair statement? The play on the words, the herd by a horse. Horses are herd animals. Uh, they mm -hmm. uh, operate as a herd. They go by a very distinct pecking order. They're very sensitive. Uh, if you've ever watched deer, there's always uh, uh, deer are Needed. also uh, animals that uh, are prey animals. Mm -hmm. And so that they're always on the lookout. There's always somebody watching what's going on. They're always paying attention to what's outside of them. And they can pick up what's going on around them. Horses are the exact same way. 
Uh, the okay. prey animals, they uh, always want to try to be with the herd, which the herd to them is whoever else is in the arena. The other people that are in the arena are part of the herd. So they try to interact with that herd or they'll create some kind of pecking order with that herd. Um, so it's really what's going on with how the horses interact with the people in addition to how the right. people interact with the right. horses. Pecking order is a good word because right. they'll pick up fears or anxieties right. and, and then you're going to be lower in the pecking right. order. Or the kid may walk in and say, look, that horse is getting picked on over there uh, and that's how I feel when I go to school. Oh. So they're always interpreting, kids and adults are always interpreting what the horses are doing to how they're feeling. Uh, this horse doesn't want to come near me, he must not like me because I'm not very likable. Um, you know, they, they are able to, and kids are able to, and adults are able to talk about things that they normally just wouldn't say, that just comes flowing out of their mouth that uh, uh, is, is very magical. Probably due in part, or maybe largely in part, of the environment that they're in, right. and it's, it's a non-threatening Very safe, non-threatening environment, yeah. correct. This mm -hmm. is exciting, and I'm glad that it's here in Berks County. I don't know mm -hmm. of any others in Berks County that no, offer there isn't. this kind no, of... No, we're the only ones. Heard by a horse, David Rosenker. Um, how do we reach you? 610-914-6106 uh, or on the web, uh, heardbyahorse.com. David Rosenker, you got to look him up. And mm. I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. And no matter the issue, it's irrelevant. That's right. This is effective. That's right. Very effective. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Great. Thanks for coming. All right. Yeah, for me coming in. Our name, Why a Missing Family Restaurant, means just that, a place to take your family. We offer breakfast buffets Saturdays and Sundays from 8 a.m. Our lunch specials start at only $6.99. Our soup and salad bar offers over 50 items, and our dinner specials start at $9.99. Need a place for that special occasion? Our banquet room can comfortably seat up to 200 guests. At Why a Missing Family Restaurant, we never stop cooking for you.